Hello and welcome everyone. I am Linda Israel and thank you so very much for being here at my live stream on YouTube. I go live every Monday at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time unless I'm on vacation or something else comes up but generally I'm live or I have a premiere video that you can come and watch. If you're watching this as a replay after the live stream has ended and you're on a computer, you can look for the little gear at the bottom of the screen and change the speed. If you're on a mobile device, generally the little three little dots at the top, you can use those to change the playback speed to get through a little faster because generally my live streams last around two to two and a half hours. I want to thank Robin for being my moderator and administrator and note taker throughout the live stream. She is generally my one uh, right hand woman, if you will, and I am so thankful to have her. She also is an administrator of the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. Occasionally, if she's not available, one of the other administrators will come over and help me or a friend will help me moderate the video today. If you have questions, please feel free to put those in all caps and I'll do my best to answer those questions. If I don't see it, please ask again. Or if you know the answer to somebody's question, please answer it. Hey, if you have a YouTube channel, please feel free to share with us by saying, hey, I have a YouTube channel and this is what I do on it. You won't be able to share a link, but you can at least talk about your YouTube channel. Let's keep the chat upbeat, friendly, and helpful. If you are having a great day, let us know. But honestly, we don't want the negative what is going on in the world right now because we are here to escape that, to be inspired, to be friendly, and have some fun. During the live stream, you have an opportunity to earn junk bucks. You can type exclamation point bucks to see how many that you have once Junkie Joe is up, because this is preliminary and I've pre-recorded this. Once you have 2,000 junk bucks, you can redeem those by typing a ward and you can get a $10 off coupon to my shop. How do you earn junk bucks? Just by being here, chatting with us. So make sure that you speak up in the chat so that Junkie Joe registers that you're here and by playing the in chat games and then also whenever you make donations occasionally I have raffles in fact right now there should be Junkie Joe coming up you can type exclamation point raffle just as that says and you can enter the raffle to win 200 junk bucks if you make a donation during my live stream do go over to my website lindaisrael.com you can see the name scrolling across the bottom here and create a user User account. Once you've created a user account on my website, make sure that you use the contact me form and say, hey, my name is on YouTube and I donated. And then I can get you added to the YouTube donator membership on my website. What does that do? Well, a member of my website in the YouTube donator membership gets 5% off orders in my shop, gets several digital downloads for free, and during the live stream, when you donate, you get a chance to win the journal that I raffle off at the very end. Throughout the live stream, I will have different raffles giving away prizes. If you will type exclamation point raffle when you see those come up, then you can have a chance to win those items. We're going to get started here in just a moment. Thank you so much for being here today. When the video is over, come back and leave a comment. Tell me what you liked about today's video or if you have questions and you're watching this as a replay use that comment section down below also look in the description box to links to the friendly junk journal paper people facebook group as well as by linda israel my instagram twitter my website and generally i try to update the products that i use and those links are in the description box as well all right well let's get started Did I go live? <laughs> Hello everybody, I hope you are well. I hope you're having an amazing day. Happy Monday! Here we are 
I just shared in the chat, I have a coupon code for everybody. It's 10% off my website. I didn't put any restrictions other than it expires on March the 15th. I may regret that. I don't know. Maybe it'll be a good thing. Maybe it'll help you. And that means if you already get a discount in my shop, you'll get that discount plus the 10% off. <clears throat> How is everybody? I hope you're well. Can you hear me okay? I'm checking out my mic. I think I'm about to order a different mic. I, I'm, I'm still trying different ones out there. Y'all having a great week, weekend, start to a Monday already. Okay, I'm trying to decide if anybody can hear me in the chat. I'm talking. <laughs> You're very welcome. Yay, Terry, so glad that you're here. Okay. I'm just waiting to make sure just if I'm being heard or if I need to make adjustments. Okay, good. <laughs> I see a yes. Yep, we can hear you. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> We have progress. So I've been working on this oversized eclectic junk journal. I got inspired to make this journal because I was cleaning out my stash and I found this cover that had some ocean pictures in it and it's 9 and 2.5 inches wide by 12 inches tall and the spine that was in it is one and a half inches and I already know that I'm going to be cutting the spine out and making it bigger because this is just three of the pages. I don't know if y'all can tell that this is, let me put it this way, it's definitely going to be a gator mouth because here are three more pages and they're not even full. I, okay, I think I, this is the right one. Yes, so this is the one we made during the live last week. I'm trying to set this over here, everything's sliding around. So I used wallpaper, I used some scrapbook paper, more wallpaper, and I used a page out of a hanging calendar for this one. And it has lots of little tuck spots here and there. And then I've started, let me move this out of the way, I think this was the next one. I think I started this one, yes, because it has the um, furniture and the forks and knives. So I made a little journal to go in it using some coffee dyed papers, some sprayed papers, and a page from a page swap that I was in. Yay, I'm so glad you can hear me. Yeah, it's a huge, huge journal. Um, so I've got pockets here. I've added some scrapbook paper. I've made a little journal to go in here. I mean, it's just got lots and lots of goodies in it. And then I've got this one here that I finished and I made another journal insert. So this is kind of a journal that has a lots of journals in it because I made several journals of various sizes that can be used by you know pasting other things in or just writing direct add more pockets thank you terry for your donation thank you thank you thank you um more scrapbook paper i was trying to use up some scrapbook paper you know i have a big stash of it and so i even did things just like taking a piece of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper and i cut it eight inches tall now for some whatever reason i can't find the center and then just making it kind of a little faux booklet. You may want to write on the whole thing. You may want to add more stuff to it. It kind of reminds me of maybe stationery, if you will. So I think I showed you all of those. So these are the calendar pages. Um, prior to that, we made, let me see which one I have that has everything in it. Okay, this one. Ah, uh, thank you, Margie, for your donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this one, I used 12 by 12 scrapbook paper, and I cut it to be 
11.7 inches tall and then I folded it in half. I glued two back to back and then I stitched around the whole thing. And on this one, I made a pocket here to hold a tall skinny journal that I used some scrapbook paper and some mop-up papers. This is one of those tear off notebook pads. You know, just a variety of things that I put in here. I've got pockets over here. I uh, took a little notepad and tore off some of the sheets. And then this is one of those file folders that you get in my subscription box. I have a plethora of those. So you're going to get more in the next subscription box. And so I uh, just sewed these. I glued them a little bit and then sewed these down, added a little piece of fabric across the top. So you get a little notepad. Use the swirly note stamp and then added a new the little bird stamp that I have in my shop. This is copy dyed paper. So I've got a lot of little things. Got pockets here. These I need to finish making some journal cards and I need to make a long skinny journal to go in that pocket. But I did pretty much the same concept, laying them out, even making a little tag or I guess you call it a tag. This was out of a box that had some, I wish I remember what was in it. Oh yeah, an acid reducer. Because <laughs> I have to take those because sometimes my stomach gets upset with some foods. So I've got to make journal cards and a couple of journals. Journals within journals for sure. And then y'all have seen all of these because I've shown them every week just about that has a flip out and lots of goodies. So again, there's some more journals inside of these. Lots of journal cards, like here's a mini journal there. Got it paper clipped so it wouldn't fall out. Here's another little mini folio journal. Another little folio journal. The file folders are fun, aren't they? Using some mixed media papers, use some scrapbook papers, use some digital downloads from Calico Collage. I mean, I've got a variety of things that I've used. All right, so let's set these aside. Okay. I've got a pile going over here. Put this over here. So today I thought, okay, what, what am I going to do today? It's kind of continuing on. So just to save time, I went ahead and took what would be my foundation paper and I glued a bunch of scraps. These are magazine paper. This is a gel print. This is a coloring book page, scrapbook paper. This is a gel print music digital image from the dragon dancing dragonflies kit and just kind of just covered all over a couple of pages okay so it's a great way to use those magazine images to get some more bang out of your buck for the sheet music just adding it in places i love the magazine so my thought was I have some envelopes. I know some of you probably, you know, have a variety of envelopes in your stash. And I thought today what I would do is spend some time decorating the envelopes and basically making them pockets to go in the journal. And then, of course, we'll have to fill those with stuff as well. Yeah, I will have to pull this. Yes, I am going to recover the cover, Julie. I'm going to have a whole separate video. Once I have all the pages done, what I'll do is I'll start a recording showing how I'm going to cut that spine out of the current uh, cover and make it bigger and then, of course, cover it in fabric, okay? All right, let's get a drink. Oh, I have to tell you, um, where's Jennifer? I need to go see her. I've made some more nails. I've got into a new technique with my nails and it's called stamping. And basically you use a jelly stamper to stamp images on your nails. So I've been playing around with that. And Henry was counting. These are all the nails that I have made here recently. I'm still 
that this one's upside down. This one's got flowers. This one's got a set of hearts. This one I've worn. I can reuse these because I just used an adhesive that makes them temporary. Um, oh, Norella will like these. They're yellow, and I put some different butterflies on it, and then a pink set. Oh, and then I made this marbled set. I played around with alcohol inks and made a background that's probably giving some glare. And so there's, there's a few of my nails that I've been making. Uh, Henry and I will sit in the living room and I'll sit in my recliner and get all of my goodies out and play. So he's always teasing me, what color are you gonna make now? You have so many that you could change your nails every two days. <laughs> I said, well, maybe if I want to do that, I can. <laughs> All right, so I've got some envelopes. These are left over from, um, what is that, greeting cards. This one is too. And then this one, my father-in-law, mother-in-law, thank you, Robin, um, used to have a notary business where they would send out paperwork that you could sign and then you got a bond and a seal that could allow you to notarize things. So I thought, well, what could I do with these envelopes? So I got the first one here. I'm not really going to pay attention to too much of what I'm putting on these. You could make this where you could see the pocket if you want. I think I'm just going to ignore or not the pocket, the window in. I'm going to ignore that and just look through my stash here and see what I can find. Oh, I like this image. And in my case, it doesn't really matter how big the envelope is because my pages are 11 and 0.75 tall and 9 inches wide. So it should work pretty good. Let me see what else I have here. I've got some music. Yeah, you know what? Let's do... I've got some mixed media pieces. Okay. So I'm thinking that maybe I won't use the whole thing. I've got this sheet music here. Do I want to make that closer to the top and then put some music across the bottom? I don't know. I'm trying, I'm playing around here. Let's see what we can do. Do I want to just really piece this together or do I want to concentrate on using bigger pieces? I have a coloring book page here. And I have some of, these are Norella's digitals here. I'm kind of liking the way this one looks. So what if, you know what, I could probably turn it this way. And put it like that. Okay, so if I were to put a strip, I'm going to cut a strip out of this. I just kind of piece it together. I am going to put other stuff on top of it, so I'm just basically wanting to cover the envelope so you can't really see the envelope. All right, so I got some distress ink here. Let's go over the edge that I just cut. How is everybody? Y'all having a good week? Did you do anything fun this weekend? We had a severe thunderstorm tornadoes come through last night in our area. I think I'm going to put this right here. Yeah. It was it's not a fun night, that was for sure. It was kind of scary. I didn't go get in the cellar. I I opened it and I cleared a path so that if we uh, were sure that it was coming towards us that we could get below ground as they like to say but it didn't come near us it did get close to my mother-in-law and father-in-law's place there's a um, Lowe's not too far from us 
and they had a bunch of storage sheds for sale in their parking lot that blew around. Yeah, seven tornadoes, Robin says. We had seven tornadoes. It was crazy. They were all over the place. Or oh, there's my scissors. I'm just going to cut this off. Put that in my pile. Add some distress inks. It was crazy, queasy, queasy, wild night. Yeah, keep your ice storm. <laughs> keep your ice storm there. Okay, I like that. And I'm kind of thinking that I don't want all of this upper portion. So I'm going to cut it off. Save it for another day. So let's just cut some of this off. Okay, so if this is going to go up there, what can I put in this corner? I've got this really wild gel print. But I've got this one. That's better. I think that's better. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Is get my pencil. That's going to go there. This is going to go in the corner. So I'm going to cut it off there. And I'm going to give it a little bit of extra just in case. Cut this apart. Hold my paper down. Okay, so then this piece is going to go right in here. Yeah, okay. Just making sure that I got it measured correctly. Yeah, I have a coupon code right now that if you want to, if you've been on the fence about ordering something from my shop, we'll use that coupon code. You can use it in addition to your discounts if you have a subscription or a membership on my website. You can use those other discounts too, so it'll stack together. I tested it. It doesn't matter what's in your card, it won't uh, give you an error message. Okay, so I'm thinking putting this piece up there, and then this piece is going to go here. So I'm going to glue this one down first. Hi there, April. Thank you for hanging out with me, Julie, Margie, who else did I see? Sheila, Terry, Ada, of course, Robin. I appreciate her very, very much. All right, we'll put this right here. Get my bone folder. I didn't do that with the other, but we'll do it now. Just kind of collaging over it. So it just kind of covers that whole thing. What do you think? So we have, this will be a pocket that we can put stuff in, okay? I don't think we need to glue this in such a way that you get an additional pocket because this book is so thick as it is, but I do want to add some more embellishment to the top portion of it. And I thought I would show you how I make some little envelopes, so a faux envelope, if you will. So let's look at this. A lot of times I look at how big my piece of paper is, and I just cut an equal square. So I'm going to make a 5 inch by 5 inch square. I make them different sizes depending on how much paper I have. I make them uh, 5 and a half, 4 and 3 and a half, and I'll show you what each one looks like here in a moment. I think I, I'm going to keep it for a little while, Robin. I may end up selling it in my online shop because there's a lot of work that went in this. And I have a feeling it's going to go for probably a couple hundred dollars, honestly. 
because of the time. So what I'm doing is I'm folding this in half, but not creasing the whole thing. I'm just pinching right here in the center. And I'm gonna take my distress tool and make a little line. And then I'm gonna go this way and make another little line. So I've got a square that has a little cross in the middle. You see that? So then I'm gonna take one side and come over and go just past that cross point, lining up the point here. Let me see if you can see if I zoom this in. Oh, uh, thank you, Jamel. Thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you so much. I'm glad you like the picture in picture. <laughs> All right, so see, I just kind of put it right on that line, and then I'm gonna take this pace and basically, I'm going to go over that line again. So now I've got this piece, okay? And then what I do is I kind of help it. I'll put my fingers here. You can also use a ruler if that helps you, if, you're, if you've made a pretty big envelope. And then I'm going to bring this up and line it up in the middle. And if you made a perfectly square, then you have this look that looks like an envelope. What do you think? Pretty simple, right? So I'll come back to the main. And then what I'll do is I will come in and add some distress inks to the edges. This is a great way to use up those scraps. You can use book pages, scrapbook paper, digital images, gel prints, mixed media papers, whatever you have on hand. We'd make great little envelopes like this. Okay, so we've got that piece. And then what I do is if you think about it ahead of time, you could decorate the inside of this. I think I'm gonna do something a little bit different today, but what I'm gonna do today is go ahead and just glue. So I'm just gonna put a little dot of glue there and close that over. I kind of help it for a moment. And then I'm gonna put a little line of glue up the sides. Not a lot, just a tiny bit. And then I'll fold this over and kind of smooth that out. Easy peasy. And so it's a cute a little envelope that you can use. I've made a bunch of them ahead of the game, so to speak. So I've got these, which are five and a half inch squares. And then I have some, I'm trying to get them all lined up. These were four inch squares that I made different envelopes. Apparently I glued them together, four inch. And then these were three and a half inch squares, okay? And then this is a five inch square, so I'm gonna stick it in the middle. So I have different sizes and colors and patterns to choose from. And I think what I wanna to do today is I've got um, some scraps of paper here. Let's see what we want. Which one do we want? I kinda of like this one. And maybe what we'll do is we'll look for um, some digital images. Now this one kinda of has a little bit of a patterning inside of it. I was going to add some paper to it, but I think I'm going to not do that. But instead, let's do some stamping. All right, so I've got a piece of paper here. I'm just getting a couple of papers. Because I didn't do this before I put the envelope together, I'm just basically protecting the rest of my envelope. And I've got the Hina Mandala stamp. Okay. Uh, thank you so very much. You're very sweet, Jamil. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so I'm just inking it up with black, jet black archival ink. So I'm just kind of marching it across there a couple of times and then I'll line this up as best I can and stamp it. And then look how that 
transform the envelope just like that. All right, so I'm going to move these up out of the way. I need a drink. Okay. So let's look at maybe this page. Here's my thought. I was thinking we could put it, I know it covers up the other in the background, but let's see what the best look is. Maybe this one. I hate to cover it up though at the same time. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm going to add something to the back of this one. I'm looking. I've got some scrapbook papers here. Let's get those out. And then I could use a whole sheet if I want. What did you, Jennifer? I showed off all of my fingernails I've been making. Maybe this polka dot one will be fun. Hello, hello, hello. All right, here's my thinking. I'm just going to cover this whole thing, but I'm going to leave a tab so that we can flip it back and forth. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to leave about a little over half an inch just so I have enough. Cut that, set it aside, and then I'll cut it even with the edge. Why am I doing this? Well, I decided I didn't want to cover up everything on my page. Okay, so... If I have it to where it flips this way, I need to glue it down on this edge so that I can have this edge. Does that make sense? You like that paper pack? That was, um, what was that one? This was uh, Simply Delightful. This is old. I've had this for a really, really long time. My mind's eye. I think what I'll do is glue this down. So I just noticed that this part of the envelope isn't really glued all the way down. So I like to go ahead and give it a little help and glue that down. All right, so now I'm going to put right on this leading edge all the way. Like so. All right. Now, line this up to the edge. Okay, use my bone folder. Smooth that out. Okay. So now what I need to do is score this. So I'm going to grab my... I use my paper cutter as so many different tools than just cutting. All right, so I'm just going to score down that edge. Hopefully it was enough. I use my bone folder to fold it over. Yeah, did anybody, did anybody that's in Oklahoma work with us anywhere, I guess? Did you have any damage from the storm last night? I think we had a small tree limb in our front yard, but that was it. Okay, so the theory is, is this will flip back and forth, okay, in our journal. So let's add some distress inks to the edges. Okay. 
getting hot in here. I left the back door open for a little while so Hercules could go in and out. All right, so if we look at this again, where did I put that? Oh, here it is. So if I put this here, and then this can flip over. Now, do I want to put something that will help keep it closed on the page? Probably. I think I'm going to go ahead and just glue this down. I'm trying to decide how do I want to do this. So I'm thinking maybe I have these little skinny pockets that if I put one going this way that the journal card would help keep this closed so that when you come to this page it doesn't just flap open. That's my thinking anyway. So I don't have a journal card made that I think be the right size. But in theory, this was my thought is if this was glued here, then it would keep that journal closed. You would take this out and then you could open that pocket. Does that make sense? I think that's what I'm gonna do. All right. Lost power for four hours, wow. Ah, oh, thank you, Cricket. I'm glad you love the stencils, yay. The artistic, oh, I just remembered. I need to put up what the March Stencil Club is. I don't think I put the images on my website yet. All right, so I'm gonna put this right about here and glue that down. All right, so we're gonna put this guy on here. See how we're kind of building this together now? So I think I'll glue this. It'll be a tuck spot. I just remembered this is a gel print mixed media page so sometimes the acrylic paint won't stick if you use Aline's tacky glue so I'm just going to use a little bit of some Fabri-Tac glue and just putting a little bead along the edge there okay so then let's put this guy right here I don't know how much I'm going to get done today. This may end up becoming a f five weeks. <laughs> uh, this was week four of this. Okay, I like that. Okay, okay. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, let's add some decoration to it. What do I want? I've got I've got some words. I have some stamped images. I don't know, I've got... Oh, I saw those, where are they? I've got these little digital images too. I don't know if I want that there or not. I kind of like it, maybe, maybe I'll glue that there and it will be behind, or it's on front of whatever's on the, did I not get that glued down? Okay, there it is. <clears throat> you know what, I've got some images that I stamped. Let's audition some. Do we like the pink? Or do we like the blue? Oh, I've got some poppies, and then I've got some purple. I think the roses may be win. You don't mind it taking so long? Well, thank you. I think I like the roses on there. What do you think? Uh oh, Robin's leaving us. I've got some 
words. I've stamped out the word journal the other day. I could stick that there. What do you think? Kind of give us a little pink, pink, pink. Everybody says pink. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to fill up my water before I started my live stream. I'm going to run out. Okay, I like that. I wonder if I should put something behind the word journal. Let me look to see. It's really not much of a piece to make a, a little border. I got a bigger piece. I don't know. What do you think? I think so. Party on till Robin gets back. <laughs> All right. I think what I'm going to do. So three inches. So let's do three and a quarter inches. Yeah. This is a, a little bit of pink over a teal. And I think what we'll do is we'll have just a small border. So maybe one and a half inches. Let's see what it looks like. I think that'll work. All right, cut that. Okay. So let's add some distress inks and then glue this in place. Okay, I got that. So I'm going to glue these together. Let's put this over here. Get out of the way for a moment. I'm just going to use Aline's Tacky Glue. This is from the Journal Quartet rubber stamp set. I sent out a bunch of um, I sent out a bunch of the prizes. If you told me you were placing an order, you got a coupon code coming to you, then I still have your um, prize. Um, if you need an updated coupon code because you got it a while back and you never used it, um, do send me a message or speak up so Robin can write down your name. And I will uh, be happy to send you a new coupon code. Now, I want to make sure that my rose doesn't go past here. And then I'm going to add some glue. And kind of slide this under. There. What now? What did Jennifer say? Break out the cheesecloth. <laughs> okay, I like this. And I think I'm going to put this piece on top of that pocket there. Hello, Annette. Welcome from Denmark. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, if you're lurking in the uh, chat there, you haven't spoke up, please do. I'd love to hear from you. Love to know where you're from, what caused you to come here today okay so now we've got this piece I knew we need a pocket I mean a, a card to go in the pocket and I don't really want this one I think I want something I don't know I've got these I don't want it to um, fall out although that, that seems to work do I have three of those? I do have three of those. I have four of them. Maybe the purple one on this page. Kind of like that. Okay, okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. So, that's going to go there. So, this can open up. And we can add some more stuff to the back here. I've got some more little pockets. Let me see how many I have here. One, two, three. Oh, there's three. Perfect. So what if... Do I, oh, I don't have any of the um, 
backers, but I think that would be good right there, just a little pocket. So let me grab my strips. And what I like to do is add some little strips so that I can use the full width of the pocket. Okay, let's do this. Because because Terry's been AWOL. She's been working. I'm glad she could stop in today. All right, so I'm going to put a little glue. And if I didn't explain this, I take this little tab that's one inch wide by however long my book page is, and I put it in the glue and then slide it over so that gets that whole edge glued down. And just kind of smooth that out. And I'm going to do it again over here. Okay. Slide this over. Okay kind of handy to have some pieces already made up so that's going to go there so what I want to do next is I need something to go in this pocket and I need something to go in this pocket and then I need to make something to go in this pocket so let's do this let's measure so this is just under six inches by nine and a quarter so maybe if we did five and three quarters by nine inches that would fit in here so I'm gonna set this aside and I saw what did I do with it I have some scrapbook cardstock here and I think it goes this way so if I make it nine inches that right do we want it nine inches in order to fit yeah nine inches would give us room wiggle room okay so let's cut this at nine inches tall and since I want it to be it's 12 by 12 now if I do 11 and a half, that makes it five, right? Five, no, what does that make it? Five and a half and five and a half will be 10. So let's make it 10 and three quarters. I don't know, just math, you know? Okay, let's move this out of the way for a moment. If I fold this in half, it's good to start this way because I want to make sure that everything's going to fit. So this will be my journal cover. And in theory, it should just slide right inside here. And it does. Okay, good. Now, I've got, um, got some mop-up papers here, and I thought I saw, ah, I have some coffee dyed and tattered angels dyed papers, so let's grab some of those. <clears throat> I did a batch a while ago. So I've got some coffee dyed, and I see some avocado dyed paper. I've got some sheet music that I dyed. What else do I have here? And I've got that green paper there. I think that'll be good. That's what, 
One, two, three, four. Maybe we can grab some scrapbook paper. I have a digital image that isn't two-sided, so I'm gonna fold it in half. Okay. I know that all of these papers should fit my nine by five and three quarters because they're just letter sized paper. Oh, you know what? I, I know I still have a couple um, pages from a page swap. Let's go ahead and fold this in half. Okay, let's look here. What do we got? We have this one. This one has some wallpaper. This is one I made for the swap. It's another one I made. This one has some dark. Let's use this one because it's got butterflies. It's a little chunky. I think it'll be okay. Okay. And because it has something on the front. All right. So I think what I want to do is put that in maybe kind of I don't know, the green in the middle, and then, and then this, and then this one. So that would go in here. Did I do that right? Oh, maybe this isn't as big as I thought it was. It was five and a quarter inches. Well, I know this one will fit, but these are all going to be too long so you know what i'll just get out my big paper cutter and trim them down okay i said five and a quarter so let's just do a little bit shy of five and a quarter there probably shouldn't try to do all of these at once so i'm going to unstack a few Cut that off. Okay. I'm not keeping all these strips. <laughs> I've got too much to keep as it is. All right. So we knew this one would fit, yes, and then these, and now if I put this in here, it all fits in my cover. Okay, I like that. All right, so there's somewhat. I saw this image from Calico Collage, and I think I can make it fit. Let's see what happens here. If I do this, we're right about here. I can cut that off. It's from the Unicorn Magic, I think is the name of it. Maybe Unicorn Dreams. Heck, just do Unicorn on Calico Collage. Okay, I like that. Alright, let's add some distress things to it. So making a journal to fit inside my envelope. I hope you like this style, you know, just kind of, it's not really planned. I knew I had a idea of what I wanted. I grabbed a few papers from my stash and tried to make them accessible so that I could put this all together. I didn't really pre-plan a lot of this. Okay, so I'm going to take this off for a moment. Okay, 
Okay, I like that with the purple. I think what I'm going to do is glue this down and then I'm going to go to the sewing machine and stitch around that outside edge. Poke, poke, nudge, nudge. Y'all get in on the raffle. Give away a 200 junk bucks. All right, so I'm going to ask you a question. Would you rather have a $10 off coupon to my shop for a prize? Or do you want one of my angel necklaces? It's a necklace that I made a while back that has beads and metal findings to make it look like an angel. All right. Y'all let me know while I'm getting my sewing machine ready, okay? All right, so we're gonna go over to the sewing machine. And basically I have it set up to do a zigzag stitch. I'm using regular black thread and I have a regular sewing machine. You know, a lot of people ask me, you know, aren't you worried about messing up my machine? I've been doing this for how long now? I, since I've been doing YouTube lives and doing a junk drill tutorial since 2017 and I've not had any problems with my machine. Occasionally I'll break a needle but I haven't had to have it serviced or anything like that. I just clean it and keep it going. All right, so I'm gonna start up here at the top. You don't wanna sew over wet glue, so that's why I didn't glue all the way to the edge. I just glued down in the middle. Ah, uh, thank you, Cricut. That's so sweet of you, thank you. Now this time, they're not beads I made. They're just, um, just a couple of cute little you see those? I didn't make those beads. I, I have some more jewelry that I made, my, the beads, but I need to uh, find it. I moved it. I don't have it set out where I thought it was. I think I'm gonna have to turn up my ceiling fan. It's getting warm in here. Just adding some stitches. I, I, I was for, lost for words for a moment. <laughs> when I get to the corner, I leave my needle down, raise the presser foot, and then just flip it around, and that gives me a nice little corner stitch. Can you believe that March marks five years that I started my artistic stencil club? You're good either way. <laughs> All right, let's go back here. All right, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. All right, so this is gonna go in here like that. What else do I want to put on the front here? So maybe we'll look at our words again. There is a beauty in simplicity. Maybe we'll put a piece of fabric behind that. Let's look at my stash here. I've got this purple. Maybe something like that. Okay, that's what we'll do, Robin. Okay. All right. That's what we'll do. All right, so who's going to win 200 junk bucks, okay? Uh, let's see who's going to win 200 junk bucks. And the winner is da, 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 Cricket. Congratulations. You've won 200 junk bucks. All right. So we're going to do a angel necklace. All right. I'll give you a choice. So you can tell me when you win, do you want the pink bodied angel? or the silver-bodied angel, 
and this one's on ribbon and this one's on a cord and I used to sell them for ten dollars a piece so y'all will get one for free today okay put that back in here so it's out of the way so y'all enter the raffle all right I'm gonna get my fabric scissors and trim this I think what I'm going to do is use my sewing machine to stitch the journal pages to the cover. Unless y'all want me to do the pamphlet stitch. I can do that. Just let me know. Pamphlet stitch or sewing machine to sew the signature to the journal cover. All right, I'll put this right here. I like it. Okay. Well, you know what, Cricut? You don't have to wear it as a necklace. You could use it as a charm on a journal. You could hang it off your keychain. You can make a bracelet out of it. And you can gift it to a friend. That's right. Sewing machine, Cricut says. All right. I got a vote. Sewing machine is my vote. I got, I got two people. All right. So I'm getting a couple of paper clips. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I have a visual where I want to stitch. So I am adding some distress inks right down the spine. I'm going to open this up to the center and make sure that I have all of my pages situated the way that I want them so if you've got different sizes you may want to move them around and then once I have them where I want them I'm going to paper clip these if I can get my paper clip to work you can use binder clips I'm, I have some other little clips that I use sometimes so just kind of depends on what you have all right, and we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna change it to a straight stitch and we're gonna stitch just a little bit in a couple of spots down the spine. You want to, you want to see me do it on the sewing machine? All right, well, that's what we're gonna do. Thank you, Giovanna, for the little sewing lamb. He's such a cutie. Oop, I dropped him in the floor. I dropped some other stuff apparently the other day. Didn't know it. You put that over there. His little sewing lamb. <laughs> His little sewing machine necklace. All right. So I'm going to position this needle all the way over. I'm going to increase my stitch length a little bit. I'm going to start it pretty close to the edge. But I'm lining up the needle with this um, fold. Can you see that okay? Can you kind of see what I'm saying? I can't, if I turn that too much, then I can't see it. All right, so I'm gonna stitch, stitch a couple, one, two, three, four, and then go back, and then go forward, and then cut it. And then I'm gonna move up to the, about the middle point again, doing a couple of stitches, go back, go forward, Cut it and then make sure I'm not going to knock anything over. Get over here to the end. Okay, do a couple of stitches and then cut it. So you kind of see the stitches there. This is what it looks like on the inside right there. I need a squirrel too. <laughs> well, someone wants to make a squirrel and send it to me. They're more than welcome to do so. <laughs> okay, so there we are. There's our little journal. 
ready to decorate even more if you want. This is from the Artful digital download in my shop. Some Tattered Angels dyed paper. Some Tattered Angels sprayed stenciled papers. So this has got a few little things. This was from a um, page swap I did back in 2017. You like that? Okay, so then this guy will go in this pocket like so. So it kinda, it's kind of fluffy now. So now we need to put something in here so that it'll help keep it closed and then add some items to this pocket. And I just saw, I have this as some coffee dyed paper that I stamped. It's a little, I think I called it notebook paper, but I'm not sure. So maybe what we'll do is we'll embellish a little something. I have some uh, cardstock here. I'm trying to decide which way I want to go. If I do this, I can just cut it to fit. Um, my stitch setting is a straight stitch and it looks like it's at zero and three on my digital. Does that make sense? Here, I can show you. Let me do this. Sewing cam. All right. All right, I'm going to move the camera a little bit. So if this kind of helps you see my machine. So I just have this set for three and that for or three and zero straight stitch okay of course my machine is a digital machine but just play around with it basically you don't want um too tight together stitches because it'll perforate the paper and basically it will just um uh oh why are we not focused okay there we go um fall apart does that make sense? Okay, man. All right, does that help? Okay. All right. So, whoopsie. I think this is just some scrapbook cardstock, six inches. So, what happens if I were to cut this at three inches? Well, that'll give me. I've got more of those, so I can make a couple. To fit in that pocket. Okay, that'll work. And I'll put this together so when I'm ready to make another one, I've got it all ready together. Said some distress inks. Okay, yours a digital too? Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, you don't want too many. That's why I only did a couple of stitches, like four or five, and then move down four or five, and then four or five. Because if you do the whole thing and you put any pressure on those pages, basically you just perforated it and it'll just rip right out. Now, if you're wanting to make like a notepad that you can tear out the pages, that's how you can do it. Just use some really tight stitches and then you'll be able to pull the paper out. All right. That's kind of boring with the brown paper in the background, isn't it? So let's see. What if we were to add, if I move this down, let's add some fabric at the top. So I'm going to glue this down. So maybe add maybe add a little piece of fabric up here and maybe a, a stamped image or a digital image I know I have a few stamped oh how about this I've got a little flower so it adds a little bit of color to the top and I've got this little piece of teal. I just want to cut that. I 
There we go. Put that back in my bag of scraps. Let's glue this down. Okay. I guess we could stitch that real fast. What do you think? Let's go over here. I'm going to go back to my zigzag stitch and then just stitch right across the top here. Just so that it has a few stitches. And then I'm going to take this little flower. I'm going to put that on there. Trying to decide if I also want, hmm, I've got a, I don't know if it's the right color. I got one of these tiny postcards here that I stamped up. So if we were to put both of those, kind of gives it a little something different. Tiny postcard. All right, let's glue this together. Gives it a little bit more stability. Like so. We can stick that in here. Okay, I like that. So now I need something to go in this pocket. And it is four and a half wide. So I, if I did four and a quarter, let's see. Oh, I've got some uh, coffee dyed paper here. So I'm going to cut it at four and a quarter. And let's see, it doesn't need to be very big. What if we did a four and a quarter and a four and a quarter inch square? So if this goes in here, so that will hold that close. Does that make sense? All right, so I'm going to round the corners of this guy. You like that? Okay, thank you. <laughs> like the little adding. I could have added some uh, string. I didn't even think of doing that. Sometimes I add thread. All right, so I'm just going to go around the edge. All right, so maybe we'll stencil. I haven't stenciled today, so let's see what we've got here. Oh, you know what? I've got the March Stencil Club here. Why don't I get that out? So this will be March of this year, and here are the patterns. So I'm thinking, I'll choose this one. All right, what color? Maybe a pink or a purple. I've got Dusty Concord. I've got Picked Raspberry. Maybe we'll do a little bit of both. All right, so now I gotta find my, there's my purple, there's my pink. Okay, so I'm going to do the pink first because I don't want to contaminate my ink pad. All right, now cooperate. Do I want to be closer to the edge? I was trying to decide if I want to center this. Okay. All right, so that is 
the pink. Let's add some of the purple. Come around the edge. I moved my stencil a little bit, but that's okay. I think more of the pink came out than the purple. Like that. So then this would go in here. We can add some more decoration down this edge. You know, we could add a piece of paper and maybe even a piece of um, fabric. I'm trying to get my scissors here. All right, let's add some distress inks to this edge. So I'm thinking putting that right here and then adding a little strip of fabric over the top of that. You like that pink? Okay, let's add some Get that here. Get that right about there. All right, so do I want, oh yeah, I would talked about using this in my pocket, didn't I? And I may still use it. But I'm kind of thinking I don't want to now, that it's too much, that I like this better. Oh, now I can't get it. My pocket is full. We think, should we put a little piece of fabric on here too? Maybe not the purple. 72 degrees out. Maybe that piece. Actually, I'm thinking I don't need anything. I think I like it without it. Maybe a word. Maybe we'll put a word up top. See what I can find here. Holy cow, Terry. How about that? Find a passion. I like that. All right, let's glue that down. All right, so this comes out. That allows us to open our pocket up, and I'm gonna, or my envelope over, flip it over. Let's put our pocket on the inside. And I think, do I wanna put it here? Because I don't really wanna cover up, I could, I don't know. Which do you think? Should we put the pocket over the magazine or put the pocket on the back of the envelope? And I think this will go in the pocket. So we can put that in the pocket. Which do we like better? I think I want it over here. Envelope. Connie says envelope. Back of envelope. Everybody says back of envelope. Okay, okay, okay. I've got these little watercolor squares. I made them a while back. I think I might want to stamp in one of them. Okay, I'm going to rip this. Put that back in here. 
So basically I just kind of made a little rectangle out of some watercolor paint. I think we'll stamp over the top of that. <clears throat> all right, we're gonna put it on the envelope. All right, all right. I'm gonna glue it down so, I, so it's done and it can be drying. Right, that's going to go in the pocket back here and I've got this little watercolor piece so I think what we'll do is we'll get out my stamps. Do I want to put it this way? I've got some little stamps that go up and down. You know I was looking at my tea stamps. Maybe one of those. Okay, fine. A stamping block. So, which one could do the lavender and stamp that right in the middle? And then maybe even stamp the word lavender on another piece of paper and lay it over the top of it. Okay this up here get some black ink um, you could type exclamation point bucks just like what Connie just did all right so I'm going to stamp that in the middle so this is my lavender from the tea collection I kind of wobbled but that's okay I think we'll put it right there and let's put the stamp back. All right. Get my lavender. And I know I have a whole baggie full of strips. What did I just do with it? Here we go. Maybe this one would be good whenever I cut off strips from the uh, digitals or other things that have cardstock I try to save them if they're pretty good sized stamp the word lavender okay put my stamps away so I don't get them messed up I found these pockets online at Amazon and so I'll put my stamps on the sheet and laminate that and then that way when I put them in the pocket they're nice and protected love lavender flowers I have some in my yard I hope they survive the winter okay there's my scissors okay do some distress inks on here Okay, so I was just thinking something like that. Maybe now we'll use another piece of fabric. So I'm going to glue this piece down. I'm making it a tuck spot because it is watercolor paper. It's kind of thicker. So we could put something in that spot if we want. And then let's see what we got fabric wise. I have this fabric that's kind of purple. Get the other end. So sometimes I will glue fabric down and in this case I want there to be a tuck spot but I don't want this to get caught up whenever you pull whatever is in the tuck spot if you will. So I've got a little strip of paper here. So what I'm gonna do is cut this to be a little bit shorter than my fabric and not as tall as my fabric. 
and this is going to help make it a little bit stiffer. So I'll put some glue on this piece and then glue that to the back of my fabric. So it gives it a little bit of body so it's not so flimsy. And then I'll put my word lavender on top. How's that? Like that? All right, let's put that right here. So I'm just gonna put glue in this corner so it can sit here and hang off, okay? It's just hanging off. And this is going to go down in this pocket here. How's that? So we need a little something we can put in here. I just saw this, so I'm going to... It's one of the Dancing Dragonflies kit pieces. I don't know which one, if it's from the subscription box or if it's from the large journal kit. I don't think it's from the planner because the planner kit has a larger but I thought that would look kind of cute right there. Okay, so we've added this. We could add more, but I think that's plenty for now. And then this piece is going in here. I gotta work with it a little bit. It's not a one-handed job, but that should keep it from when we're flipping through our journal, this flopping around and all the stuff falling out of it. Lots of layers. Can you see how thick that is? Look from the top. Okay. You love this? Okay, thank you, Terry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so now I've got another envelope here. And I'm thinking this time, maybe we'll just glue it. I don't know, I don't know if I like that look. Maybe what I'll do is cut off part of this so we don't have the whole thing. Let's see what it looks like if I did this. So now if I did this, that kind of gives it a little bit more strength. I think I like that. <clears throat> All right, where's my distress pad? There it is. So I'm just gonna add some distress inks along this edge. Okay. And I think what we need to do is find some papers to put on here. And I'm going to glue this part down so that it won't be moving around. Lots and lots of ideas. Uh-oh, don't be poking yourself with a needle, Julie. I put too much glue, but that's okay. I like that. So we'll put something on here to cover up that name of the... So what do we want to do? Do we want to do something like that? Do I want to punch a circle maybe? I don't know if I have my circle punch laying here. This one might work. Oh, my scissors fell on the floor. I might need those later. All right, let's see here. Maybe this punch actually works. Paper shapers. So what if I were to put that right here? So it kind of looks like a seal. I 
Oh, thank you, Cricket. Have a great night. Thanks for stopping in. All right, let's glue this down. do we want to put on this one so that when it is on here it will pop over and we have the pocket in the back of the envelope and then we can see the birdie below it do I want to do another pocket here let's see what I've got I've got some shorter pockets I think I need to keep a couple of those. Oh, I've got these pockets, too. Maybe something like that. I do have a couple of the uh, mixed media pockets that I made. I could glue that on top. I don't know, maybe I'll make make this a little different kind of grouping you know sometimes I I have to play around with it you know and think what do I like audition things and then I may just scrap the whole thing and that's okay you know don't fret about how it's coming together if it's taking too long then maybe it's just toss it aside and grab something else and stick it down instead so I think now what I'm gonna do is I just saw a gel print here and I kind of like that putting that in the center something different I'm gonna add some distress inks to this then we'll find something to add as a focal point okay I like that I've got some digital images from Calico Collage here. These were journal pages. You know, I could do that instead. I kind of like that. I'll save this one. So this was a journal page that's normally eight and a half by 11. And I told my computer to print it as a five by seven. And then I just cut it out. In this case, it was from the Shabby Flowers, I think is the set. And she didn't have any dividing lines. That's why I did it, because it doesn't look like it's supposed to be a journal page. And I printed it on cardstock. So I thought that would be kind of pretty to put across there. And, oh, I've got some uh, Bluebell. That doesn't really go, does it? But I saw... What did I do with those? Did I stick them in here? I printed a bunch of things not too long ago that I found. And I thought I stuck them right here. But now, of course now... Oh, here we go. I didn't see them. So let's see, I've got a hummingbird we could put over the top of that. This is from the Exquisite Dreamer kit. It's a digital image. I don't know if that goes. Maybe this blue one would be better. Okay, what do we want? I have this one, it's kind of a pastel. I have a sunflower, let's get one of those. No, 
This is also from the dragon or uh, unicorn kit, but I think there's too much yellow. Maybe this one. We're making lots of layers here. Y'all are entering the boss fight, I see. You know, I've got um, a couple of these Polaroid images. Maybe those are what I need instead. I think I like that better. I know, I changed my mind. It's okay. <laughs> okay, let's put that there. I think I need to stamp the envelope behind the card. So, let's get this out. And maybe I could use... So way I can look up real fast. Doo, doo, doo. I've got the corner roses stamp. And if I stamp that around the edge, let me grab my one of my bigger blocks. Here we go. That'll kind of give it a little bit more pattern. All right, so we'll just stamp it. I'm not really paying too much attention other than just adding the pattern around the edge. Set this over here for now. Hmm. Add a little bit more distress ink. I don't think it needs to be an additional pocket because we're going to have a pocket in the actual journal itself. I do need to make sure I have it going the right direction. So, maybe like that. Little layers. All right, let's lay this down. Okay, I'm, I'm going to make it a giant pocket in case something wants to be hidden behind it. You know, you never know. You got to ask the papers, do they want to be hidden or not? <laughs> I know I saw some book pages that I cut up. Had in my little basket here. <laughs> course they're not going to be found right on top you have to dig through the whole pile move it over here so you see my my mess there's some music got some wallpaper this little basket seems to be growing. I've been trying to use more stuff out of it, but at the same time I keep adding scraps to it. It's crazy. Oh, here we go. Maybe this will work. Here we go. I was thinking of just a little piece. So I'm going to cut this in half. Oh my. <laughs> That's why I don't want any birds. My mom loved birds. We used to raise parakeets that we bred and sold, finches and cockatiels. And what else was there? French? Frenchy? French? Finches? Finches. Finches. I was trying to think if that was it. Cockatiels. Oh, those birds. They were a mess. I 
I was kind of thinking something like that, just adding a little bit on the front here. Okay. Looks like the works for some mat. Yeah, yeah. I could make some master boards. Can make some master boards out of all those scraps. Maybe that's what I'll do next. Is go through that and use all the piece, pieces. Okay, I'm gonna put this one in the corner. <coughs> I'm gonna put this over it. Bird. Okay, so we're just adding some layers. And this is going to go on here. So I think I'll just go ahead and glue this portion down. All right, let's get it somewhat centered on the page. Okay. Now add some journal words or something over the top of that. I mean, do I really need to have a title of junk journal? Nah, I don't think so. How about collect beautiful moments? Let's see how that fits. Maybe right there in the corner, collect beautiful moments. Do you have two cockatiels and 10 parakeets? Well, mom, for the longest time, we only had one parakeet in the house and she taught it to say words. It would see Peter Piper peck to pickle peppers, Peter Piper, and it would call the dog <laughs> and it was destructive. <laughs> Okay, maybe some fabric. I may come down just a little bit. Or maybe we'll put it up here because I'm thinking that maybe I want to use one of these mixed media envelopes I don't know that one may be too big but I've got one of these smaller ones that if I were to put it right here and I put a tall skinny I don't know I already had those made up I don't want to cover up the bird so that's why I was thinking maybe something like that I thought I had a couple of those but pink and a blue one. Maybe the pink one for this envelope. All right, let's measure this to make sure. Okay, so <laughs> pardon me. Let's do inch and three quarters. So, hmm. Oh, I've got this card stock here. So how tall do I need to make it? Maybe, let's do th three and a half inches. And let's do an inch and three quarters. We'll make a tag. Let's see what this does. If I were to put this here. Uh, thank you, Barb. Hey, how are you, Barb? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Margie. Thank you, Terry, for your donations today. So if I put that here, in theory, this, when you pull it out, then you can flip this over, okay, on your page. I like that. All right, so I think I'm going to punch the top of this. I've got my tag punch here. 
All right, so I'm going to kind of line this up as best as I can in the center because it doesn't fit in the grooves to keep it locked in place. Punch that. So we get a little bit of a tag shape there. Get rid of the trash. All right, let's add some distress inks to it and then maybe sign some fibers to put in the top of it. Barbie, so glad to have you here. Hello, hello. Okay. I don't know, maybe a little piece of, um, I'm going to see what I have, image and whatnot. I do have this, but that's too big. Okay. <laughs> Maybe a dragonfly. And maybe I can do the word uh, specimen. Maybe move that down. May not do the white paper. I may have to swap that out. I was just saw that scrap and I thought, well, why not use it? But here's another one. Maybe this would be better. Something like that. All right, so I'm going to cut this so that it's just below the uh, hole that we're going to want. So if I put that here and then put the little dragonfly, and then I could put the word specimen. Maybe down here at the bottom. What do you think? Let's add some distress inks and glue it all together. It's kind of handy to have a few pre-stamped images, but if you have to, stop. Stamp a few. All right, I'll glue this down. Now I think we need to find some fibers and then we'll go to the sewing machine and stitch the fibers down. Okay. Oh, I've got a headache today all of a sudden. All right, let's put this right in here maybe. Okay, like that. All right. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you for being here, Barb. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your donation. All right, let's put that right here. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one down since I know this will fit in there. I'll make sure, check my work. Yeah, it fits in there. So I'm going to just glue this down. I've got little tabs on the back so we can use the full width of the pocket. And I'm going to glue it just below so that it becomes a holder to keep this from popping up. And I'll glue this down. I think I'll put it at the top here. Leaving vampire bites on your feet? Well, if you will yell, make a loud noise and say, ow! Whenever he does that, um, it startles them. And that's kind of how they learn not to bite you. <laughs> I don't know. This is going to go here. Maybe in the middle. I'm going to put it in the middle. So you have you have to teach them to get them out of that bite them back <laughs> so to speak say ow and 
And no, don't bite me. Okay, I like that. Let's add, let's go add some fibers. Let's see what I have here. <laughs> I have a, have a little bit of this. And I see a little piece of blue here. Let's do a small little snippet. And what else do I have? I've got this blue. What else do I have in here? Oh, I've got this other blue. Maybe that'll be better. Okay. So I'm just going to cut a couple pieces the same length. Like so. Okay. Put that back in my goodie bag. All right. And then I usually keep a little piece of embroidery floss or in this case it is a piece of wax linen thread that was cut off left over and I'm just folding this over I think my dog Oreo is here <laughs> Henry must have be starting dinner because now Oreo is barking all right so I'm gonna fold this up like so and then I'm going to go over to the sewing machine sewing lamb and stitch right across here and then that'll keep it flat so it doesn't make a big knot okay yeah positive so you have to teach them to do something else besides bite you All right, so we got that stitched across there. Okay, so that piece will hold that. So now we need to put something in here. Looks like I accidentally got some glue on there. All right, so what do we want to put inside? So this is eight and a quarter by five so if i did a five by eight let's do a five by eight so maybe grab some more i've got some more scrapbook paper here maybe we can make another little this is just regular paper i thought i had some card stock here printed <laughs> well, I've got some of these. They're not as colorful. Catnip. Maybe I'll do this. And kind of make a, not a full journal, but a partial journal in that it's a cover and then we'll use some scrapbook paper on top of it. I kind of like this butterfly. Yeah, let's use this butterfly paper. All right. So first, I'm going to cut this to be 8 inches tall. And I'm going to cut it to be 10 inches wide. And I think instead of cutting it, I'm going to score this. And that's going to become a little pocket in the back of the journal folio thingy. Kind of score my paper, but I think it'll work. You know what? I could use some washi tape. I haven't used any washi tape in this journal. And I have some. Maybe this one. Alright, so here's what I'm going to do. Since I kind of buggered up the paper a little bit. Is I'm going to find the end. I thought I folded this one over, but I guess I didn't. I try to remember to 
fold a little piece up. Come on. Sometimes I can't get a hold of it. There it goes. App, it's ripping on me. Some of this um, washi tape is really old. I can't get my fingernail under it. So I'm going to use a pokey tool. All right. That's where it ripped. Let's see if we can get it to go this way. All right, now cooperate. All right, there we go. So now I'm ready to is put a little bead of glue. Okay, and then we're gonna go beyond and don't pull it taut. You just want to pull it just enough that it will lay flat. Okay, I'm going to cut this off. And I'm going to cut this piece off. I probably should have wrapped it over, but that's okay. We'll take this piece and stick it on here so that I can unwrap it next time. <laughs> A lot easier. Okay, close this up. Fold this over. And now we have a little bit of washi tape on the edge there. And we'll fold this up. And in theory, if I did this right, this should fit in here, okay? What I want to do now is cut a piece of this to fit on top. Smooshies. <laughs> All right, so four and a half. Let's do four and a half inches. Cut a little piece. And then this was eight inches, right? So if I did seven and a half inches, that gives us a nice little border around there. That we can find in here. <clears throat> I don't think we want the birds and the butterflies together. Oh, that's a two sided piece. I have horses. Oh, wait, I've got this butterfly and this butterfly. We could put another border behind this piece, maybe a piece of uh, a gel print. I've even got this purple paper here, but I think I want, what if I did a little piece of this purple behind that? It just kind of gives us a nice little variety of layers. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we'll go this way. All right, so this is three and a quarter inches. So if I go three and three quarters, that'll give me a nice little border. And we'll go this way. I think that'll work. kind of using my mixed media papers, scrapbook papers, digital images from Calico Claws. That's from the Apothecary Garden journal kit. 
Bye, Barb. Thanks for coming by. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Greatly appreciate you hanging out with us. All right. Add some distress inks. Julie's got to go too. Is that what I saw? All right. Add some distress inks onto here. What? Someone said your name, Julie. Are you leaving us? I think they were confused. Barb's leaving us. Okay. So, I'm thinking... And then layer that on there. Oh, I need to put some distress inks around this piece. Maybe we should go to the sewing machine. Let's add some distress inks to this edge. Okay. So. I think I'm going to layer all this up and then go over to the sewing machine and stitch, 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 stitch. All right, y'all into the raffle. We're going to give away one of these necklaces. I'll lay them out here in just a moment. Whoopsie. Glue this down. Okay. And when I say the winner's name, you could tell me if you want the pink or the silver while I glue this together. Okay. That'll give me a moment to uh, let this dry before I go stitch it. And I think what I want to do is stitch this off of here so that it doesn't put any stitch marks on the inside. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm trying to get that where it's not flashing out. Okay. Bad to the bone. I need a drink of water. Okay. Let's pick a winner. Of uh, the necklace here. Thank y'all again for being here. I greatly appreciate you hanging out with me. So the winner is da, 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 Julie Parker. Which one do you want, Julie? The pink one or the silver one? All right. So then, as soon as she says, I'll write her name. Julie. Let me get my pen. I've got a few other prizes I found to send to you, so we can, we can send those really soon. All right, I'm waiting on Julie for a moment. We're here, Julie. Pink, please. All right, perfect. All right, we got that set aside for Julie. We'll save the silver one for another day. All right, so now we're going to go giveaway, reset. This will be the last raffle of our uh, live, and it's going to be for one $10 off coup Oh, my hat flies tight. To my shop, period. There you go. All right, let's go to the sewing machine. Da, 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 da. Oh, I might hit the button. That might help. Okay, don't get it too far because then you see the other light and it glares on you. Got a little bit of a glare. Okay, so I think I want to stitch around this portion and then I'm going to stitch around the outside edge. So I've got it set for zigzag. I'm just going to go around. I just like the look. I don't know. It's just something that 
makes me happy. I think we can add some, a couple of pages, make this a little journal slash folio. Maybe it's an oversized greeting card in a sense. All right, so now I'm just gonna go around this edge. Just strictly for the purpose of decorative stitches. I think I need to add some more ink to my distress ink pad. I was noticing that there's not as much showing on the edges of this paper. So I don't know what I'm going to do next week. I have one more page set that I have started. They are going to be basically 12 by 12 paper that I have folded in half and I've already made some pockets that I think I want to use. So there's that part. <coughs> Okay, I did everything. All right, we're back. Put this back up here, out of the way. Put this over here where it belongs. So I think I'm just gonna glue that on the front here. And I saw that I have some more um, mop-up papers that I made a while back. So we could use one of those. Okay, smooth that out. Or we could just leave it like it is. Okay, let's see what I have, if I have anything word-wise. So I've got this journal that's made out of a paper sack. I don't know, do I want to do that? I don't want to cover it up too much, but maybe like that? I'm thinking maybe like that. <clears throat> I'm not putting a lot of embellishments on it because it makes it difficult to take it in and out of a pocket or an envelope. So let's put it right here. Okay, I think that'll work. Okay, I haven't put anything on the inside. Maybe we need to stencil some more. I haven't done a lot of stenciling today. Well, let's do this one. This is also from the March Stencil Club. Just in case it goes over my page a little bit. And what color do I want this time? All right, why aren't you working? You should be working fine. Okay, there we go. And, oh, not that part. What am I need to look at? I need to look at this part. So maybe a teal and a blue. I've got this blueprint sketch. And I have Mermaid Lagoon. So here is the blue. I think that's the mermaid. So let's try and see what that looks like. Okay, so I know I don't have to go all the way, but I just want a little bit. Just to add some color. You know what? I don't know why I'm fighting this. Margie got me this, and I've not been using it. I'm just making it hard on myself. Okay, I've already done... 
this area. Let's make sure my stencil doesn't move. There. That makes it so much easier than trying to hold it in place. <laughs> if you didn't know, the underneath this piece of paper is a glass mat that is also magnetic that Margie gave me for Christmas. Well, I haven't gone to the store yet to buy some fabric so that I can drape my lights because it was making a big glare. So I just covered it with a piece of brown butcher paper. It's craft paper that I had in my stash. And that makes it where I can not have the glare. Yeah, it does. It, it, it's not, I'm not used to it, you know, and I know I have them here and I've tried to put them where I could see them. I may need to buy some more magnets because those are pretty cool. So there is the hearts across the page. We're going to flash it out. Come on, quit that. And then we're going to glue this over as a pocket. Okay. What is that stencil club? That is from the March Artistic Stencil Club. It hasn't been, the image hasn't been shared on my website, but I can show you the stencil. So you get the kind of a heart flower and you get this little flower pattern. And then you also get, let me flip this over so you can see it better this half sheet stencil that has two different patterns on either side. This is what they all look like together. Okay. March Stencil Club. Put that back in the file folder since I have it here. Alrighty. I have a little journal tag. We can put that in here. Oh, I have a uh, library card. Let's put that right behind there. And then this will fit. Inside of here. I think I need to put something on here just because it flubbed up on me. It's a technical term, you know. I have a little piece of some uh, stamped coffee dyed paper that was given to me by uh, Beverly of Beeline Designs. I was trying to see, oh, I've got a butterfly. How about a bright pink butterfly on there? <clears throat> okay, so let's add some distress inks to the edges of this copy dyed paper. And then we'll glue it down. I'm going to tear it just a little bit more. There. That was using the 1912 stamp on some coffee dyed paper. I haven't talked to Beverly in a little while. She's put her shop on hiatus, so that's why I haven't been selling her stamps. Yes, you can do it for just one month, Terry. That's fine. Put that right here. You just have to cancel it when you're done. I'm thinking like this. Maybe a little piece of fabric. I'm liking using my fabric today. All right, now cooperate. Let's see. Got a little piece here. Actually, this piece is narrower, so I'm going to use it. Okay, let's 
glue this together. Oh, washi tape on the smudge works. Yes. Well, the washi tape was just so much work, Robin. I keep forgetting about it. Okay, so I'm going to put the... Don't forget to fly down here. This is better than the washi tape, though. <laughs> There. So you can still tell it was an envelope. It's just not the same blue envelope that we had before, right? So this is going to keep it closed. Got collect beautiful moments. We have a little dragonfly specimen. And you flip this over and we have some more butterflies. And you slide this out and we have more butterflies. And then we put hearts on here and you can keep going I can keep adding some more stuff but I think I am going to finish this page and say at the moment I like it I think it's done I could add one more I just saw them a moment ago I made these a while back maybe add this right up here at the corner just for some more color I think I like that. I'm going to glue that down. Okay. 15th of the month. So if you order it right now, you will get the March Stencil Club. If you order it after March 15th, you will get the April Stencil Club. I like it. So we've got this side and this side done, and I still have yet to do anything in here. I do have a couple of more envelopes that I'm thinking of using, and I may use this skinny envelope because then you can use this whole area, you still see it, and I may use this one over here as a pocket. That may be what I do. Kind of gives you some ideas. I think I'm going to get off here a little bit earlier. I got a headache and uh, I know Henry is, I think he's home. I'm not positive. I heard the dog barking. So let's do the raffle. I hope you enjoyed what I showed you today that it's given you some ideas to try um, making you know, the little envelope using a pocket to help keep a flip closed. Use an envelope so you hold other things. Um, I don't know, it's just, just trying to do something a little bit different. And I think what we'll do next week, I don't know, I may end up doing master boards next week and hopefully during this week I'll be able to finish these pages and put them in order that the way that I want them and then create the cover and I'll record that co the cover creation process um yeah that's what I'm thinking maybe so close yeah I'm glad you enjoyed this thank you so very much for hanging out with me yay Terry I'm glad I'm glad you're loving it okay cool 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 all right, so I don't know. We may do part five next Monday, or I may do some master boards because I have enough paper to make a bunch of master boards, so that may be what we end up doing. All right, well, I'm going to pick the winner of $10 off coupon to my shop, and it, everybody is eligible to enter that raffle. If you win and I don't already have your email address or a way to connect with you, please go over to my website at lindaisrael.com. It helps me tremendously if you create a user account and input your mailing address, your email account, all of that, and then send me a message on the uh, contact me form that says, hey, I'm so-and-so on YouTube and I won, and then I can get you your prize. Oh, hey, Sandra, hello, cool. I'll get you a coupon code to send out to you. Thank you so very much. 
All right, so let's pick the winner of $10 off coupon to my shop, and that winner is Terry McManera. Congratulations, Terry. All right, well, I'll get that coupon. You already, no, you got 10% off. I will email you or message you on Facebook a coupon code, and you can use that on your next order, okay? All righty, well, I think I'm going to get off here again. Thank you all so much for being here and hanging out with me. I greatly appreciate your support. I hope you enjoyed this live stream of just kind of chatting and showing you some of my ideas of putting things together and being very eclectic. And this is going to be one fluffy journal for sure. I'll see you next week. Like I said, I don't know if this is going to be part five or if we're going to move on and do some master boards. I do have a couple of tutorials that I've got ready, I just haven't hit the schedule button. I don't know why, because I hadn't done that yet. <laughs> I just realized the other day, I've been so busy, that Robin had helped me get the blog post written. So now I just gotta look at it and get it all done. Alrighty, well y'all have an amazing day. Have an amazing week. Do something fun and creative. Share some joy and kindness in this world because you know we need it. And maybe it will spread like wildfire if a fire if everybody is just a little bit kind to someone else. All right, y'all have an amazing week. Thank you again so very much for being here. Lots of love to each and every one of you. Bye, everybody.